morning. Um, this is Nicole Spinuzzi, Kylie Dorton, Lindsay Myers, Amy Wilson, and I am Megan Red. Um, the title of our study is Social Media and Credibility, a Study of Risk Communication. Um, with the relatively recent surge of social media, PR practitioners and scholars alike have become increasingly interested in its uses and limitations. Um, through attitude change theory, we tested whether message credibility and medium affected the credibility of the message and the um, attitude towards HIV and AIDS testing. And now Nicole's going to tell you guys a little bit about how we did that. Um, our study used a 2x2 two two factorial post-test only experimental design, testing the credibility of traditional media versus social media and of expert versus peer. And for the purposes of this study, traditional media was defined as television, social media was defined as Twitter and YouTube, uh, expert was defined as the center of disease control, and uh, peer was defined as a friend. All the participants in each of our four cells did watch the same video, which consisted of three college-age students sitting around a coffee shop discussing the benefits of getting tested for HIV and AIDS. The participants were told to imagine that the message was recommended to them uh, by either an expert or a peer and that it was transmitted via traditional media or social media. We had a total of 202 participants with about 50 in each cell. And our first research question asked, to what extent do people who are considered more tech savvy uh, spend more hours on the internet than those who are not considered tech savvy? And we measured the tech savviness by, uh, we use a scale to, de uh, to measure tech savviness, we use a scale developed by Sweetser, uh, asking participants how often they use social media items such as Facebook, wikis, and blogs. Our social media index ranged from 15 to 75. <clears throat> the lowest score was 24 and the highest score was 67, with a mean score of 42 and a standard deviation of 8.23. The most frequent social media activities were text messaging and then Facebook, with mean scores of 4.68 and 4.67 respectively. The least frequent social media activities were Second Life and Internet hosted video games, with mean scores of 1.22 and 1.64 respectively. To answer research question 1, um, 85 participants fell below the median score of 46 and had mean scores of 2.66 hours on the internet per day. Um, above the median score were 107 participants with a mean average of 4.03 hours on the internet per day. These results indicate a significant difference with it when we ran a t-test with a p-value of 0 .001. These results indicate that increased social media use indicates increased internet use. So basically, if you're a social media user, if you use Facebook and Twitter, then you're more likely to stay on the internet longer than those who do not use social media. Um, our second research question asked, it, asked basically as to what extent are social media more credible than traditional media, as well as to what extent are social media more likely to change the attitudes than social media. And we used a five-point version of McCroskey's 12-item semantic differential scale to measure source credibility, and we used... Uh, a five-point version of Osgood et al.'s attitude change uh, scale to measure the participants' attitude towards HIV, HIV and AIDS testing. Our credibility index, the lowest score was 20 and the highest score was 60, with a mean score of 39.77 and a standard deviation of 6.91. To answer research question 2A, we ran an ANOVA with the 12-item credibility index scale as the dependent variable. <coughs> <clears throat> and the cells as the independent variable. The cells were a social peer, social expert, traditional peer, and traditional ex expert. The p-value we found there was 0 .804. Then when our Bonferroni post-talk showed no significant difference in credibility between social media and traditional media. Our attitude index ranged from 12 to 40 with a mean score of 29.60 and a standard deviation of 5.62. To answer research question 2B, we ran an ANOVA with the 8-item attitude index scale as our dependent variable and the cell as our independent variable with a p-value of 0.341. Uh, the Bonferroni post hoc showed no significant difference again in attitude change between social media and traditional media. This research indicates that participants felt that messages received via traditional media were equally credible to messages received via social media. Also, messages received via social media and traditional media were seen as equally effective for changing health behaviors. Um, we felt that this was a very important finding and that sometimes public relations professionals have a very limited budget to use in doing a public relations campaign, especially involving health behaviors. So this research shows that they should be able to use social media 
and receive roughly the same results that they would have if they had used traditional media, since social media is seen as equally credible. Uh, for our final research question, we asked to what extent are social media more effective at spreading a message than traditional media, and for this we created our own scale, a six item Likert type scale, um, to measure how how likely one would share the message about getting tested for HIV and AIDS to persons ranging from a stranger to a significant other. The likelihood of the sharing message scale uh, was our research question three. We ran an ANOVA with the six item scale measuring likelihood to share the message as the dependent variable and the cells as the independent variable. The likelihood to share the message with a significant other, uh, the traditional expert cell was 0.96 higher than the traditional peer cell with a p-value of 0.003. The likelihood to share with a family member was in the social expert scale uh, cell was 0.90 higher than the traditional peer cell with a p-value of 0.001. And in that same question, the traditional expert cell was 0.92 higher than the traditional peer cell with a p-value of 0.001. Finally, the classmate, the likelihood to share with a fellow classmate, the social expert cell was 0.63 higher than the traditional peer cell, and the traditional expert cell was 0.68 higher than the traditional peer cell with a p-value of 0.007. So this is a little bit difficult to understand, but basically that boils down to if they were likely to share the message with a significant other, then they were also likely to share me their message with their family and friends. If they were likely to share a message with a family member, they were also likely to share a message with a friend. And if they were likely to share the message with a friend, then they were also likely to share it with a classmate. All of those results had a p-value of 0 .001. So what these research questions tell us, especially the results from research question three, um, whenever we did our lit review, it indicated that a message received from an expert should be more influential than a message received from a peer, and our results did prove that to be true. Uh, the expert from the CDC that we used uh, was seen as the most credible source for both traditional media and social media. Also, the message from the expert was more likely to be shared with significant others, family members, <coughs> and with friends. And now Amy is going to give you some of the limitations to our research. Okay, well our study did have a few limitations. The first one was due to our sampling method. We used a convenient sample instead of a random sample, so that does mean that our results aren't generalizable to the population as a whole. And then our next limitation is due to our manipulation check. At the end of the post-test, we asked all the participants to identify whether the message that they saw was transmitted via traditional or via social media, and then we asked them if the message source was an expert or a peer. And in a lot of the cells, they either failed both manipulation checks or they failed one of them. Um, so that does limit the validity of our results. But we do feel that um, there are some potentially good reasons for the confusion. In the first place, people tend to think that social media are, um, are something personal. So in the social media cells, they might have just been confused about the expert versus the peer source because it was coming to them on Twitter. Um, and also, there is no set definition of what is and what isn't social media. So when we ask people, did you get this on traditional or social media, again, they might have been confused because they don't really know what the set definition of social media is. And then our final limitation was just due to our experimental design. Um, the experimental environment in which they watch all these videos was up in the computer lab, and that environment is very different from the one in which you would normally watch a video on TV or read a Twitter feed or watch a video on YouTube. So again, that limits the validity of our results also. But in conclusion, even though we didn't find that there was a significant difference in credibility between traditional and social media, we still think that our results are interesting and that they're important for PR practitioners. Because like Lindsay said, um, a lot of times practitioners, particularly in the health communication world, don't have a huge budget for their campaigns. So if they can use social media and it'll be equally as effective and equally as credible as traditional media, then that's very helpful to them. Um, and as social media usage increases over time, we hypothesize that the credibility of social media will continue to increase. So we would suggest that future researchers replicate our study in a few years' time just to see if, um, if there's a change in the credibility of social media over time. And that is all.